Victoria, can we start? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to all of you. Uh, so this is the first of a series of technical sessions aligned with the strategic plan that we crafted together last November during the VHL network meeting that was held in Sao Paulo. This plan aims to strengthen the Medicare network and co cooperatively build the Caribbean VHL. Hope this session will be valuable and please feel free to ask questions and share your insights. Today, we will have the opening remarks by João Paulo Souza, the director of PDM, and Victoria Christian Taylor, regional coordinator of the MedCarib Network. And then Veronica Bidala will share with us the session's calendar, and Sweetly Suga will talk about the document indexing according to LILAC's methodology. Okay, so uh, I think we can start. João Paul, please. Thank you, colleagues. And uh, it's it's very, very good to, to, to be here today. And very good to, good to see you, Victoria, and all the colleagues. And um, I, I just wanted to express uh, my confidence that through these activities and our collaboration, we will uh, we will be able to face the challenges that we we, we have in our activities, and um, develop this this collaboration collaboration uh, step by step, uh, progressively in uh, in a positive way. And um, I, I want to I had the opportunity to, to have a look in the in the program, and I'm confident that through this series of activities we will be able to, to advance and I hope that we have a, a very active uh, participation of uh, our colleagues from uh, Biremi but also from the whole network and um, yeah I think that's that's my, my opening remarks here and I will be uh, listening uh, to, to the, the, the conversation and the, the activity. Thank you. Thank you Jean-Paul. Uh, Victoria please. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I just want to say that, you know, it is wonderful to be here and I'm really delighted that we are gathered here for this first session of this um, training session with Bir that Biremi has organized for the English speaking Caribbean. Um, although Biremi has been doing these training sessions annually for quite a while, in the past we had in the Caribbean, we have occasionally been able to participate with some of the sessions since most of them were done in Spanish or Portuguese. Now, those language barriers did not afford MedCarib to fully benefit from the training. And to address this, we had an, a series of discussion with BME and as we tried to increase our inclusion in this training. And when we met last year, late last year and even early this year to explore how to make these sessions more accessible, it was, it was a fairly easy um, solution and we came up with a solution and I'm, and I'm so happy that we did find a solution to this, um, to this issue. And I want to encourage all of us to seize the opportunity of these trainings, not only for yourself and your own development, but also to benefit your team members who you work with and other persons in your network. We will share the calendar so that you can plan your participation. And I really want to extend my gratitude to the director of BRMA for his facilitation and his vision where all of this is concerned and to Veronica, Marcia and Sudi and all the other staff for their kind consideration to us in the Caribbean. I just want to welcome everyone and I know we will have a very productive session. Yes, so thank you so much. Thank you, Vitalia. Um, so now, Veronica. Share. 
So, could you see my presentation? Yes. 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 Ah. Oh, it just went oh. right. It's back. Okay, good right. afternoon, everyone. It, it's very, it's very, uh, for me, it's, I'm very happy uh, to present the calendar of meetings uh, with the Medical Network for this year. Uh, you are proposing uh, five meetings on topics that will contribute to strengthening information networks in the English Caribbean. Uh, you expect uh, broad participation from all librarians, information professionals, and scientific journals editors. And uh, um, let's see, let's see the, the, the calendar. Please, Marcel, the setting. No? Ah. And the first, the, the first meeting today, uh, you have the um, the, the term no, on indexing based on the LILEX methodology, which will be presented by Sueli Suga. Um, for all network libraries and information professionals of the MedCarib uh, network. The second, the second meeting is August 20, uh, 20th. Uh, and it will address the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion in editorial process of scientific journals. Uh, it will be presented by Dr. Anna Eredia, uh, and the same, the target audience in here, not only the libraries, but uh, scientific journals, editors, and editorial teams members uh, that welcome in this session. The, the third meeting uh, will be on October 1st um, to address the, doc the topic of document index according to the LILAX uh, methodology and present some, something like uh, initial tests, tests using the artificial intelligence in the indexing process, presented by the team, Ana Cristina, Luciana, Piovesan and Sueli Suga from Bireni uh, for all the, the for all network. And the fourth meeting uh, will be on October 29. Um, Cosimeiri will present the Virtual Health Library Reference Librarian Network uh, that it, it is aims to share experience and skills among the librarians to support the user for searching access and applying technical and scientific information in the evidence-informed decision make. She will present the activities in all um, products, information products to support to use in, in, in the how to, how to use the evidence to decision make. And the the fifth meeting um, I don't, I, you don't, no, uh, I don't have the, the, the date confirmed till now, but the topic is, it will be marketing strategies for promoting the Magic RB network. It's important to, to, to say that uh, all the, the, the five online meetings uh, will be on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Brazil time. Uh, with the purpose to exchange experience and knowledge among the network, the, the Medicare network, aiming to is training health information networks in the Caribbean. Then you have the, the calendar, the schedule, you know, the dates for the five meeting, meetings, July, today, August, October two sessions, and November the last one. Um, let's all participate. I, I, I like uh, one more. And I hope meeting you, everybody, in the, the, the next sessions. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Veronica. That's it. So let's start. Sueli, por favor. Just a second, please. 
I'm finding my here. Okay. Mm. So <laughs> let's start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sueli Suga. Uh, I am the um, uh, I am supervisor here at Bireme of the Referential Information Services area. And today I'm delighted to be here with you, uh, Major Caribbean colleagues, uh, to talk a little um, uh, about uh, the indexing process. Uh, it's a um, series of sections that we have in Bireme uh, since 2017. <laughs> And uh, mainly the the um, the public, the target public for this kind of section is librarians, are librarians, and uh, information professionals. The idea is to uh, to give you the the guidelines on how to index. And because of this, we are not talking about the index rules, but how is the process we use and this kind of uh, uh, the, this process can be adopted in any uh, information system, uh, inf information management system. Um, here in Miremi, you, uh, I, think you, I think you know that we adopt FI admin system, but if you want, you can uh, adopt this uh, guidelines for your indexing in your information systems in your institutions. Okay, since you have, of course, uh, the um, DEX mesh vocabulary service um, um, installed in your system, you can adopt or uh, even if you uh, have a, a controlled um, controlled uh, vocabulary, uh, you can include this kind of uh, terms or method uh, in your indexing. Okay. Uh, so what we are going to see today? Uh, this is the an agenda. No, it's uh, it's really detailed, <laughs> but uh, for uh our my presentation will include uh, an introduction for document indexing using a uh, lilacs methodology the importance of the indexing in the field uh, in the health area uh, field uh the types of documents we index and the levels of depth of index indexing adopted depending on the type of the document no um the essential tools uh we are going 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 to use uh to index uh a step by step process and some examples uh of two different types of documents not for you to see how uh it's really different to index uh for example uh, uh Systematic review or a clinical trial, and um, a editorial. There's non-DEF indexing. Okay, so what is uh, uh, what we're talking about when you are uh, uh, talking uh, document indexing in Linux methodology? Uh, the Linux indexing is the process of synthesizing the content of a document. Yes, synthesizing. Why? Because we are not indexing or including descriptors to um, represent any, any subject. But the most important, the, the, the subjects that are retrieved and uh, um, searched by the users, by the, the, the researchers, okay? Because of this, uh, when we are um, indexing, you are, we are describing, identifying and describing the most important uh, topics in the document, okay? And to give the, the, um, the document a representation of all the important contents in the document. And uh we for this we select the appropriate terms from the vocabulary and the vocabulary we adopt here at BDM is the dex mesh uh, thesaurus 
and we use the guidelines from Lilac's methodology, and all the rules uh, are uh, in our manual, and but not all the rules have their reason. <laughs> and the, the reason is that the types of documents we, re, we want to represent and the specificity of the area, the health area, requires to us to make some co uh, coordination of the talks, okay? Um, then, other important thing that we have to differentiate is that uh, index, indexing is not classification. Why I am talking about it? <laughs> because uh, when we are searching Lilac's that database or Medicare database or any database, uh, we can find many broad terms applied for indexing. But when we apply specialty terms like uh, public health, pediatrics, nursing, or any other specialty um, term, we are not most part of these times we are classificating the content and not indexing. When we are talking about indexing, we are uh, specifying the content of the documents. When we are classifying, we are just representing the theme, the theme in broad categories. And then because of this is important to choose, uh, one of the most important principles of the indexing is the specificity of the terms we apply in the uh, in the indexing? Because if we just include public health, pediatrics, nursing, or any other um, broad term, we are just including terms in the in, in amount of millions of documents that we are not be able to retrieve the documents be just because we have. Um, included um, uh, uh, broad terms and not the specifics that really can retrieve the documents for uh, the researcher or the the politician no, that needs the this uh, to retrieve this doc document. In, uh, then uh, I just include a key for an example. Uh, if I have a document or a thematic, thematic statement uh, that is uh, epidemiology of dengue in the pediatric po population in Guantanamo, if I would classify, I would classify this document in public health. But if I would uh, index this document, I would apply, assign the descriptor dengue with the qualificator, qualifier, <laughs> the qualifier epidemiology. That means that th this, this coordination means that I'm talking about the epidemiology of dengue, okay? As we can see here in the thematic stage, statement, okay? Uh, and once more, <laughs> just for you to see why we cannot apply public health or speciality or broad terms in the indexing. If I uh, make a, a search here in the VHL regional portal with the uh, main subject, uh, main subject, su main subject uh, as public health, if you analyze a little bit, you will see that the initial results are not specifically about public health. But as many people, many indexers, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, applied public health for many articles or many documents, we retrieve documents that are not about public health, but a treatment or any topic related to uh, public health, okay? And another um, screen here just for, uh, from CARFF Days portal that I believe, I guess, we have the same happening here, but uh, when I see the, the second one, or infodemics, a new challenge for public health, okay, maybe it's okay, but the most important thing, 
we just apply a term if we if it's the theme of real theme, the focus of the document, um, the focus of the document, okay? Uh, and uh, for you to see, for the same statement, this is a document, if you want to see here, I have the links uh, above here. Uh, and after, I can uh, send you to Victoria, uh, the, the the presentation for you for her to share and then also we, we will uh, publish this presentation and share to you okay uh, for you to check any of these links that uh, I have here in my presentation okay and then uh, continue here uh, the difference we have between uh, the uses of the um, the difference not the, uh, uh, in between uh, the keywords, the search strategy, and the indexing terms. And here, for this document, Epidemi Epidemiology of Dengue in the Pediatric Population in Guantanamo, if we just see the author's keywords, you will find three keywords, dengue, uh, pedi pediatric age, and epidemiology. And when we see the indexing, we you, you, you just can see here that they are divided in four types. Primary descriptor, the primary descriptor is dengue with the qualifier epidemiology. The secondary uh, descriptor, Cuba epidemiology, retrospective studies and cross-sectional studies. This is the second secondary uh, uh, descriptors. And the publication type, this document is an observational study. And the check text that describes the subjects of the, the, the study, who are them? Human, male and female, infant, newborn, the age uh, range, you know, infant, newborn, infant, preschool, uh, children, and adolescents. And if we see how the terms are adopted or used it in the search strategy. You can see here that we have the prefix uh, MH for major uh, mesh descriptors, not uh, all the mesh descriptors, primary and secondary descriptor. If you want to just retrieve um, the primary descriptors, you have to to you to adopt the prefix MJ. Okay, and M, M, but here, for this example, we have included many descriptors, MH. Some terms are in the TW, that is the, the, the words that in the title, in the abstract, and the keywords here. And here you can see that it is in Portuguese, and English, and in Spanish, because, because the, the, for you to retrieve in all these three, language you have to include uh, the translation for the the languages you want and that's all here uh all the the the, the, the ah and uh, there is but i know that's not um recommended <laughs> uh practice that's to adopt the um, and not uh operator, the Bolia operator, but for this I have uh, included just for you to, to see how is adopted the terms, the me, the, the DEX mesh descriptors and the terms adopted in the others uh, areas, not title, abstract and keywords. Why indexing? Still, <laughs> if we are uh, now we are using a uh, chat GPT for many things, and <laughs> and why we still have to index uh, if we have so many um, possibilities, no, not only using artificial intelligence, but also uh, using um, or adopting search strategies that include uh, words, free words, as we could see in the last uh, slide. Because we 
are talking about to retrieve the documentation that have a, a technical language. Sometimes uh, the technical language that are in the um, title or the apps or the keywords do not um, are the, 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 the language adopted in the controlled vocabulary. And then because of this, when we can standardize and adopt uh, terms like the descriptors from the XMESH uh, vocabulary, uh, we are just um, providing a way to be more consistent, specific, and um accurate not uh, um in the construction of the search strategy okay and another thing that we can think about it is that we are representing the literature the documentation uh, with all the possibilities we have then because of this it's important so when we are, we are talking, the fields of the of health is vast and includes technical language specific to, to each speciality. Then uh, is what I, I'm trying to, to explain here. Uh, there are distinct uh, types of the end designs of studies. Um, when we think about a case report, an editorial, or a clinical trial, cl clinical trial, or, um, I don't know, meta-analysis. Each one of these designs have specific structure and when you need to refine your, your search, you can uh, be more consistent in the retrieval when it is indexed by uh, a librarian or an information profession. To locate most relevant publications efficiently, nobody wants to receive uh, a list of thousands of records. Most people need want, I don't know, 10 records, uh, 20 records. And if you have so many the documentation to review, it's really difficult. Uh, and we have Lilac's methodology where you can find rules, guidance uh, for you to describe and represent the main and secondary issues, describe the, the study design, all the aspects that are uh, really discussed in the document, the type of the publication. So uh, when we have here um, this kind of guidance, uh, you really will understand what you should index and not just include any word that or any term that will uh, appear in the document only mention but what kind of the uh, topics should be indexed mm, i think i have talked about this let me continue here and what do we index for uh, in Lilux and Medicare, Medicare da database. I have included here just two examples. Uh, in Lilux, Lilux, we have the West India Medical Journal Indexed, and I guess uh, it's also included in Medicare da database, but other kinds of documents, unconventional documents, uh, all the great literature you have in your institutions. Uh, PhD, uh, thesis and master's dissertations, monographic books and series, and the chapters. When we uh, index the chapters, when uh, there's um, the title, uh, author, and references, <laughs> and the do and the, all the contents, the, all the content is um, developed with the. In from the, the beginning to the end, without the need to, to, to see the, the other chapters of the book, okay? Um, and for Lilac's uh, database, we do not accept course complexion monographies or projects, but I don't know if it's accepted uh, for Medicare database, okay? Uh, other journal 
titles or journal articles, I uh, don't know if you have for Medicare uh, database, but for lilacs, lilacs, uh, we have only West Indian Medical Journal from the English Caribbean countries, okay? Tools needed for indexing. Of course, we need the full text of the document that we are going to uh, index. Second, we need the manual of document indexing uh, that is published, I, I believe, just in, in Portuguese and Spanish. I have to, I, I think we have uh, the English version. I have to see, to check. Uh, you will need a system, an information management system for us. Uh, BDM and I guess many of you from Medi Caribbean countries also adopt FI admin system. Uh, and inside FI admin system, we have the XMesh service to identify and select assigned the, the, the descriptor in the bibliographic records. Okay. What else we can use? Uh, we can use uh, other databases to to see how similar documents are indexed. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we can use the uh, VHL interface or PubMed interface to and and make searches with the words or um, also the 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 title the the full title uh, to find how this kind of documentation is indexed. But this kind of strategy we use only after uh, we have read down all the uh, first steps that are um, technical reading and other things, okay? <laughs> but it, it's a possibility to use uh, VHL and PubMed inter database interfaces uh, for searches and finding other terms that should be applied in the indexing. Um, also, we have Mesh On Demand or Dex Finder. Why? To, the, the same idea is to identify descriptors uh, that can be adopted in the indexing, but also we have to review all the, the terms that is suggested by these tools. And magical dictionaries, but I, I guess many of us <laughs> adopt the, the searches in Google. But if you have uh, the possibility, of course, magical dictionaries are the most reliable sources of information for you to understand the meaning of the content of the document, the, the documents. Knowledge and skills needed for the indexer. So we have here many um, specific contents uh, about the indexing policy. And this indexing policy is in the uh, manual. And also you can find this indexing policy in the DEX mesh uh, portal or service inside the FI admin system. Um, of course, we use Dex Mesh. Uh, how to make the searches in the Dex Mesh uh, service is important because sometimes the terms are not easy to identify because of this. Uh, we also use Mesh on Demand and Dex Finder, but uh, if you have, if you know a little more about how to search terms in the XMesh portal, uh, probably you will find the descriptor you need. Um, you have to know a little, a little no, you have to know how to use uh, the FI admin system and to know um, the tops and the terminologies in the in the health area. How, why? Because we have to find out the. Uh, sometimes we do not have the exact term uh, from the document in the Dex Mesh vocabulary. Then we have to uh, search for synonyms or related terms that will help to make the coordination and construction of the concepts we need to index or and rep represent. 
And uh, another knowledge that is important is scientific methodology in health. Because if you know what are the study, uh, what kinds of study designs, what, what is no? each one of the um, study design, how it works, the structure of this kind of document, the, the, of the, the study, uh, you will, it will be easier to index and represent these contents. Why? Because you understand what is structure and what is the content that is important to be represented. And if we think about the skills, of course, reading and interpretation. And this reading is a technical reading. We do not need to read the full text, the full document, the full content of the, the document. We have to um identify just the main points that is required in the indexing content synthesis because we have to uh, just represent the most important <laughs> topics logical thinking because we are uh, combining coordinating the, the the terms to create or represent the concepts that the author is um uh, talking about it in the document. And finally, uh, attention to detail, because we have to really understand uh, what uh, the, the author is talking about. And sometimes some aspect that I just mentioned should be indexed just because it's important. And it, this kind of thing, we just will understand when um, we are we know the content and uh, attempt to the content the, the technical reading and the time is running <laughs> uh, uh, i will just try to speak faster uh, so just here is a um, representation but not a rule okay just uh, for some years of experience just uh, I have classified you know, the, the, the time and experience in, uh, for the professionals that work with indexing. And, and then if you are, if you are considered not a, a beginner, it's less than a year uh, as an indexer, and the time to perform the indexing, probably you will use more than an hour to index. Why? Because you just do not, un uh, uh, do, do not know the, the uh, the health area, probably do not know the study design, and probably do not know uh, the indexing rules, okay? Median experience, one to five, uh, up to five years, and probably probably you spend uh, to, from 30 minutes to an hour to um, index. And for experienced indexers, more than five years, and up to, 30 minutes to make an uh, indexing. Indexing principles. Uh, as you can see here, the most important, and because of this is the first uh, principle we have uh, highlighted is the specificity. The most important thing is if, it, if there is a um, more specific term index for, uh, to to, um, to describe the content, you should apply this term the most specific possible. Concordance, uh, specific, uh, consistent and fairness. Um, you have to follow all the indexing policy uh, that is described in the LILACS methodology. Why? Because these uh, are according to the characteristics of the health area. There's no rule in the in LILAC's me methodology that is not uh, according to how uh, research um, and its, the study designs are done in, in the health area, okay? But it's not necessary to memorize any rule because if you understand why these rules exist, uh, you probably will automatically <laughs> start adopting them uh, because you understand it, okay? 
and always consistently apply these indexing rules uh, without, um, uh, or in, in, in fact, uh, uh, the, um, approaching all the issues in all aspects in, a, in an impartial and non judgmental manner. Multiplicity, as we have death uh, indexing, probably you should index and adopt, assign, provide to each document with many descriptors as necessary uh, to describe all these aspects. If you have a doubt how many uh, descriptors you have to adopt in your indexing, then the maximum of six primary descriptors and up to 20 secondary descriptors. So, Lee, it's too much. <laughs> six descript primary descriptors. I think it's okay, it's not too much, but maybe to any secondary descriptors is too much de depending on the document you have. But uh, it's difficult to, to adopt all these 20 uh, descriptors, okay? Fidelity, descriptors must faithfully reflect the content of the document and good judgment is omitting irrelevant and irrelevant data without sacrificing uh, impartiality, specificity, multiplicity, or fidelity. And some uh, some questions to do, no? Uh, what are the major points of the article? What are the minor points of the article? What is discussed as opposed to what's only mentioned? And what's the aspects of the... Um, the perspective of the, the, the article is experimental, clinical, pediatric, geriatric, veterinary, microbiological, biological, endocrinom <laughs> endocrinological. <laughs> and um, a good indexer always uh, does not let bios or knowledge or of a subject alter how the article is indexed. Index only what the article says. The main source of the information is the document. If the if a subject is not discussed in the document, it should not be indexed. Does uh, does not read the article word by word. As I told you, we are making technical uh, reading. This takes time and does not always provide better indexing. Recognize the authority of an article and does not correct any of the assertions uh, made in the article. Do not attempt to correct bad signs or point of mistakes. Um, describe the concepts in an article using dex mesh terms. Then you have to familiarize uh, with the dex mesh. Uh, be aware the terms available before you request, if you need, no, request a new term. Uh, always adopt the, the most specific and always index using the most specific terms. Is examine the next three structure to ensure that you are using the most specific term possible. And here the process. <laughs> um, First, reading, of course, technical reading. Then we are analyze the title, the introduction, but in the introduction, we are uh, trying to find the last paraphrase uh, where we will find the purpose or the objective of the study. Attention to title, sections, par par paragraphs, uh, tables, graphs, and others, and also, attention to the area of uh, material and, ma and methods, discussion and conclusion. What aspects you should uh, find out uh, here? Identify the concepts to be indexed, the primary, primary descriptor. What's the focal point of the document? The secondary descriptors. All this, the complementary, supplementary uh, terms, uh, th uh, themes, topics discussed in the document, mainly um, the study design, the, um, any other uh, epidemiological method that is important to be indexed, 
uh, sometimes we have uh, geographic areas indexed as secondary descriptors. And, and uh, uh, in the next slides, I'll give you more details. The check tags are the subjects of this research, okay? And sometimes historic periods and the type of the publication. Um, follow the indexing re uh, principles for identifying. So when you have to identify the concepts to index, you also already know, know uh, what you are uh, looking for. And then once you have um, identified the concepts to be indexed, you will uh, it identify and translate these concepts to mesh, DEX mesh terms, okay? And assign the descriptors by type, these types here, uh, in the information management system. That is for us, FI admin system. And review the, the document indexing. Uh, the DEX mesh uh, vocabulary, I, I, I believe you know, have a scope note, an indexing note, alternative terms, uh, the hier hierarchy of the terms, pharmacological actions, pre-coordination note and related terms. Okay, if you want to see, uh, here is the link, and we have uh, other classes here talking about uh, more about uh, DEX. When we think about the use of the DEX mesh vocabulary, we have to always think about the rule of three. When we have more than um, three descriptors from the same hierarchical category, category um, you have to index using the term that directly precedes them in the hierarchy. For, for instance, if, we, if I want to index, mm, it's in Spanish, sorry. Uh, three of these terms you should index with the peritoneum in, and not with the three uh, descriptors that we have here, okay? Uh, and also for the ones who already know DEX, <laughs> we have uh, indexing nodes, and these indexing nodes have a kind of concise and telegraphic style. And all the, the instructions are divided with this kind of signs here. The semicolon is, is used for um, separating the, the one statement from the other. The, the equal sign uh, indicates that a free or author term must be indexed with a specified descriptor. The plus sign uh, indicates the coordination of the, a descriptor with another. The semicolon indicates a condition, situation, or set the circumstances and provides guidance for selecting the appropriate script. And the slash indicates the notes that is qualified. And here, an example for indexing notes, you see here the semicolon. <laughs> and here we have three uh orientations guidance here gen of this descriptor uh respiratory tract neoplasm no, neoplasms uh the annotation is general unspecified uh, unspecified prefer specifics and here this is a neoplasm uh term so all uh when we are uh, uh, describing indexing a neoplasm uh topic, we have to coordinate with histological type of neoplasm. Uh, we have the location of the neoplasm, but also we have to coordinate with another descriptor that indicates that is the, the histological uh, type. Uh, the technical read reading, uh, when we are doing the reading, we have to find out the central topic of the, the, the documents, all the supplementary um, information that supports the development, the, the development of the research findings, the study design or editorial format, uh, the research subjects and historical periods, people, person or institutions that it's discussed as 
uh, topics, geographical regions that locate where the study, uh, mainly if it's epidemiologic study, and sometimes when we have uh, historical articles or historical research, we have to include the time periods. Types of descriptor. Uh, the main information is that you have to assess the significance of the concept. If the focal point, it's primary descriptors. If it's complementary discussion, secondary descriptors, okay? So here, an exam, some example no, of the most frequent terms adopted as primary descriptors, diseases, chemical, chemical compounds, uh, anatomy, therapeutics, functions, and public health terms. Uh, if it's secondary descriptors, uh, type of the, the studies, type of the studies, sorry, <laughs> there's a typing uh, mistake here, uh, types of studies like uh, cross-section studies, techniques like uh, ultrasonography, diseases attributes like recurrence or um, chronic diseases, no? epidemiological concepts like prevalence and geographic regions like Latin America and Caribe. Caribe, I, I don't remember the, the term to describe Caribe, but uh, we have index mesh vocabulary, the countries and regions. We do not have the provinces and the cities of Latin America, okay? Just the, the, the regions and the, uh, the countries. The qualifiers represent the aspects, concepts, perspectives that the author discuss in a particular subject. So we are discussing here in this, this example, the genetics of thyroiditis. And the check tags, uh, as I, I also already talked, uh, we are describing this study subjects, the population. Then if it's human or animal, if it's male or female, the age range and the historical time when historical articles or documents. Publication type uh, refers to the format or category, category of the study, as, uh, as in, uh, for instance, um, editorial case reports, reviews, controlled clinical trials, and so on. And here, an example of uh, the, the coordination of descriptors. So we can have the coordination of two or more descriptors, descriptor with the qualifier. Um, we have also pre-coordinated descriptors, like ac acute disease, disease, descriptor plus pre-coordinator descriptor, GOAT plus acute disease, okay? And factors that involve involved in the indexing that can impact your understanding uh, and interpretation, of, in, of course, representation of the document. The structure of the document, the clear wording with this with simple language, the content complexity sometimes are topics that are so complex that we spend an hour just to understand what the document is about. <laughs> but it's a kind of uh, characteristic of the health area, no? <laughs> And the study design type. Here, the division, no, no, how to choose uh, if you are doing a death comprehensive indexing or non death indexing. Uh, monographies like books, theses, and dissertations, gray literature, uh, editorials, um, letters feedbacks, case reports, revision, biographies or obituaries are all non-death index, indexing. And the death or comprehensive exhaustive indexing is applied for original articles, which means uh, results of clinical uh, studies. Okay, when we have um, mostly uh, clinical trials, controlled clinical trials. Ah, here, clinical trials, meta-analysis, systematic reviews. 
Uh, an example of non-death indexing, uh, this document is an editorial. So for this document, that it's not more than a page, we have just three primary descriptors. Periodicals as a topic, uh, reduction, and nursing. So non-death indexing means that the article is indexed with less detail and less specificity. In general, da da da, what I already told you. And here, an example for a more comprehensive, um, exhaustive indexing. So we have here not six, but five primary descriptor with all coordinated with uh, qualifiers secondary descriptors for three of them with qualify four of them with qualifiers and other describing uh, the research design no? instead of epidemiological studies prospective studies risk factors uh, prevalence and incidence and here the geographic area country uh, with the qualifier epidemiology because the main the main descriptor here, we have the epidemiology of COVID-19. Oh, and um, COVID-19. <laughs> uh, and the check tags to describe the, hum the, the subjects. Human, male, female, adult, and middle-aged. Uh, and then this death indexing means that the article is indexed in detail, covering all the main points and significant minor points uh, in the document. And the checklist uh, we have here is do the primary descriptor represent the focal point of the document? Were the, the descriptor coordinations done? Uh, were the elements of the title analyzed and indexed in according to the discussion of the document? Were the um, aspects or facets of the, the, the subject of the document assigned? And were complementary discussions such as type of study, characteristics of the disease, and other aspects of the subjects indexed as secondary descriptors? Uh, were the research subjects and historical periods described as check tags? And was the format or design of the study indexed as publication type? And then here's the end <laughs> of the presentation. Uh, I now I am here for available for doubts for all of you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Sally. Now um, you can ask for questions and comments, Victoria. Yes, yes, Marcia. Thank you so much, Sudin. I think that that was a good presentation in that it helped us see how FI admin is totally aligned because sometimes when we go into FI admin and we do the training, persons ask some of these same um, questions that were brought out in the in the presentation. So I think that is a good companion for the FI admin training. Um, when you spoke about uh, um, indexing and not classifying, Fine. I think that was a really, really good point because sometimes we tend to get lazy and just do that bit to get the work to get it done. And when you look back at it, you realize that it really wasn't classified and the, the, the salient keywords did not come out, you know. And then you have to also look. I have seen um descriptors that was so long, it's almost as long as the articles. And when you're trying to find the information that is indexed, it is just a line sometimes, and it doesn't give you enough to warrant you actually borrowing the book or, or taking on board that, that 
article as a reference source. So I think that these were really, really good points. And I know that the um the the presentation itself is a, a, a valuable tool that we can use when we are doing the, the, the training. Um, one of the things though is that some persons like Barbados didn't get on at all, and there were other people, um, some persons from Guyana didn't get on, and it was the same problem with the link master. So I don't know what may have been the reason why they were unable to get on. So we may have to look at it, but because a, a number of them um, said that they wouldn't give. But I think it was a really good presentation. And mm -hmm. if anyone else had any questions, um, well, some of mine were kind of um, covered when you came down to the end, when you when you show, okay, how to actually go and, and ensure that you pull out what you need. Because that thing about having many, many descriptors that does not really <laughs> give enough information in the in the article is one of my peeve yeah. points. Mm -hmm. I I'm I'm like that. That just doesn't work. And for those who would have sat in a indexing and classification um session in, in library school, I'm sure this brought back a whole lot of memories and pain that we just have to do. <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, yeah, so any other questions or comments that persons may have? And I also like the angle that you took it from that you that you did the presentation from, that the angle was that you, you showed the process. I like that very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone else? I'm sure things were much clearer, much, much clearer now as far as how we go about doing our indexing on the database. But if there are any questions, persons feel free to ask. If you want, we, I can give permission to access the microphone because I, I think they are not able to open their microphone. If you need, I can. I don't know if we are able to type so here in the chat. Could, I think you can. You should be able to type in your chat. Hmm. Yeah, probably they can type in the chat. Um, but um, I think the organizer can open all the mics and the cameras. Maybe we can make a photo. I know I I know that Marcy was saying we have to do a photo. Let me just get myself in gear. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I guess all all can open their microphones yeah. and and video now. If you can try he please to open your videos. I'm not seeing from where I'm sitting, I'm seeing that they have only, they may be able to open their mics, but I'm not seeing the video part of it. When I look on the side, I'm seeing um, the videos. Okay. Ah, yeah, now right, I can see. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so if we do not have any questions, no, maybe, um, well, if you have any questions after, maybe you can send them and we can uh, answer them by email, okay? Yes. Okay, so just remember, uh, the next session will be on August 20, right? And it will be on the topic of diverse, diversity, equity, and inclusion in editorial process of scientific journals, okay? And the next one will be on October 1st, addressing the topic of in document indexing according to LILAC's methodology, but talking about the 
okay, artificial intelligence issue, okay, issue or topic or, <laughs> or anything, okay. So if you could please open the camera, you all, I really would appreciate that. And thank you. And Marcia, I think we also yeah. had a, a fantastic turnout and I want to thank everyone who came on from Met Caribbean who also um, invited other persons to come on. We did have, we do have a, a very good turnout, even with those who were unable to join us because of whatever issues. So I want to just thank the team for supporting, for coming and for learning something in this session. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you all. I think we really appreciate the participation of the presence of all of you because this is very important to be in. Thank you. So let's take the photo. <laughs> this is I you. Oh, more people. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's wait a little bit to see if everybody opens. <laughs> so if you can turn on your camera so that you can get this historic photo. O quinto no view. In view. Large cameras. Miss Miss Stella. Ah, yes, my dear. Miss no para isso tudo. Tem uma boa computadora aqui agora na web web. But me, you you had a question. You had a question. Who has a question? Telling that some of our computers here don't have webcam. So oh, you won't be seeing everybody from Ministry okay. of Health. Some people Alexa. don't have webcam masks here. Okay. Okay. Did someone join me? Okay. So I tried to capture. Victoria, did you do the same? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do the. Yeah, I, I didn't do the thing. <laughs> okay. I think it's okay now. Let me let me try just one more, and it will be okay. 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 <laughs> okay. No. Okay. I think that's all. That's all. <laughs> all right. Thank you. See you thank thank you, you very so much. much. Bye, thank ciao. you so bye much. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank bye you. everyone. Thank you. Very very good presentation. Thank you. Yes, it was. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Celine. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>